Six o'clock on the dot. Good morning. Welcome to Up With Krem. We're glad you're joining us here. I'm Tim Pham. Let's start things off by taking a look at your weather forecast yesterday and even this morning. Some of you may have encountered a few sprinkles. I don't even know if we can call it really showers, Thomas. It was so light, but I was glad when it happened. Yeah, I'm always glad to see any rain in the summertime, and that does also include this morning live picture over Riverfront Park. Doesn't look all that damp, but there has been not just some low cloud cover, but you can even notice some rain showers off into the distance. Again, I'll take any kind of rain, even if it is just a light sprinkle this morning. Right now it's 64 degrees, mostly cloudy skies, and as we take you to Doppler radar. There are those showers a little bit just drifting through Spokane County as we zoom all the way in. It is now over Spokane Valley and heading towards Liberty Lake Valley Ford getting some uh, rainfall and all the way down Highway 195. Actually a majority of it picking up at minimum light rain as of 6 a.m. As you wake up this morning, we want to help you prepare for your morning commute. We want to get you updated on this. This morning, Washington, our Highway 195 near Mullen Road is fully back open. So remember this one, we brought this to you yesterday. Washout actually closed the highway Sunday night after a brush fire started. It burned about 10 acres and it was reduced down to about one lane. But again, back open this morning. Right now, we are continuing to track multiple wildfires burning across the inland northwest, starting with the Swawilla fire burning on the Colville Reservation. Evacuations have shifted in that area. The level three go now orders are smaller and no longer include Keller, but there are still homes in the evacuation zone. This morning, the fire has burned more than 47,000 acres and is 45% contained. Washdot said the Keller Ferry is expanding its service. Previously, it was only open for people evacuating. Now, people who live between the ferry's northbound landing and Manila Creek Road can use the ferry. So in North Idaho this morning, the Gwen fire is burning more than 28,000 acres and is 0% contained. Level 3 evacuations were downgraded to level 2 in Julieta. This means people who live there can go home but should still be ready if changing conditions happen. The town of Kendrick is also under level two evacuations. Our Boise station spoke with people who live in the area who believe up to 100 homes and buildings could be destroyed, including the Coulter Winery. Intact. Um, it did destroy our main irrigation lines and our power supply, so we aren't able to manage it right now. The vineyard says they will have to start from square one. Firefighters from all across Spokane County worked I haven't had much time to rest this last weekend, battling three wildfires. Krem 2's Cody Proctor found out one of those fire crews faced a lot of challenges, including some issues in the sky. Time's a precious thing for oh. firefighters. It's in a fast moving wildfire, uh, especially one that's wind driven, seconds count. And they put those seconds to good use with crews on the ground and air support swooping in from above. But according to Ryan Roderick with the Washington State Department of Natural Resources, as crews tackled Sunday's fire by US 195 and Mullen Hill Road, air support stayed on the ground even longer thanks to one of these. DNR says a private drone delayed their use of air support. We cannot fly when drones are in the airspace. Thankfully, it was just a very brief delay until that drone was able to be cleared. But in wildfire, seconds matter. Roderick says having a drone in the air at the same time as their planes and helicopters is a safety issue. There is the potential that that drone could impact into one of the engines. Um, it is a, a very, very serious safety concern. One they're seeing more and more often. An unfortunate development, according to Roderick, considering how efficient air units are with fighting fires. It's extremely successful when uh, when we put air on these fires. We know that for wildfires, if we can keep them to 10 acres or less, the chances of them turning into a catastrophic wildfire decrease exponentially. So when a fire starts, DNR says one of the best things the public can do is leave the drone at home. It is July. We still have a lot of fire season left to the U.S. Forest Service in 2019, there were at least 20 instances of unauthorized drone flights over or near wildfires in seven states, including Washington. Right now, it's a federal offense to knowingly operate a drone over a wildfire. 
The time now is just about 6.06. Let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. An update on a story we've been following for months. A Pullman father suspected of kidnapping his two-year-old daughter is now facing federal charges. The U.S. District Court filed an international parental kidnapping charge against Aaron Ong this week. He was arrested in Mexico earlier this month with his daughter and his fiance one month after Ong failed to show up for a custody exchange. Ong is being held in Arizona waiting to be brought back to Whitman County. His fiance, Nadia Cole, was deported back to the U.S. She is not facing any charges right now. This morning, we are remembering Tracy Walters, the owner of Walters Fruit Ranch at Green Bluff. Tracy and his wife, Letta, were both retired school teachers. Walters not only ran the farm at Green Bluff, but was also a legendary running coach here in the Inland Northwest. He twice coached U.S. national teams and helped train Spokane's own Don Cardong for the 1976 Olympics. Walter was 93 years old. After four years in Post Falls, the Idaho Master Gardener program is returning to Coeur d'Alene. Our news partners at the Coeur d'Alene Press report the Diagnostic Plant Clinic offers free services to residents of North Idaho near West Ironwood Drive. The walk-in clinic is open Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. through September. The clinic will open on Thursday, and if you can't make it to the clinic, gardeners can call or email their questions. That number and email, there on your screen. That is a look at your morning rush. We've had term, lim term limits for presidents in the United States for nearly 75 years after the Truman administration. And I believe we should have term limits for Supreme Court justice in the United States as well. President Biden unveiled proposals that would change the way the U.S. Supreme Court works. The trio of proposals includes who can sit on the bench and for how long. CBS's Skylar Henry has more details from the White House. President Biden unveiled plans Monday to dramatically change the way the Supreme Court operates. Extremism is undermining the public confidence in the court's decisions. Biden is calling for stripping away lifetime appointments and enacting an 18-year term limit for the justices. That would set up a system where new justice would be needed every two years. They have no desire to make the court better. They're just trying to make it more liberal. President Biden also wants Congress to pass a tough new code of ethics requiring the disclosure of all major gifts and the justices to recuse themselves if they or their families are involved in the case. No other federal judge could get by with what Clarence Thomas did to receive millions of dollars worth of travel and gifts and not report them publicly. Neither proposal currently stands any chance of passing the Republican-controlled House or narrowly divided Senate. The liberals in this country want to pack the court. They want to destroy the court. So their initiatives coming from Biden will be dead on arrival in the Senate. President Biden is also calling on Congress to ratify a constitutional amendment prohibiting blanket immunity for presidents. It comes in response to the court ruling that former President Trump is largely immune from prosecution for his acts in office. This nation was founded on the principle there are no kings in America. Each of us is equal before the law. While the White House isn't expecting to secure a new amendment on this politically charged issue, it hopes the conversation will energize Democratic voters. Trump came out against the proposal, saying Biden is trying to destroy the Supreme Court. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. We take you back outside where any of those early morning raindrops have already ended, at least here at our South Hills studios. A few light rain showers just here or there for the Inland Northwest this morning. It doesn't last all day, but always a welcome sight to see some rainfall. And this is actually looking like a really nice day. 81 degrees. I probably won't even have to use the AC all that much. Maybe just for an hour or two this afternoon, just to take uh, a little bit of the heat out of the uh, out of the home. But check it out this Friday at 103 degrees. That's going to be a record breaking day this Friday, but it also could be breaking some other records as well. We'll show you how long this yet another heat wave is going to be lasting. My full forecast is ahead in about five minutes.